Hi everyone, Joshua Hinlin here at the Tank Museum Bovington next to the centerpiece of their collection, the Tiger 131, with Dan Siskin's Brickmania Lego tank version of the Tiger 131. So we're here in front of the Tiger 131 now with the tank expert David and Dan Siskin from Brickmania who designed this model. So if you want to take us through the different elements in the new Tiger 131 kit. Sure. Well, the main, the main uh, uh, difference between this and any other Tiger done previously is definitely the camouflage scheme. So the camouflage is, is designed, you know, modeled after the actual Tiger 131. Um, it was as it was captured in North Africa in 19, uh, was it 42 or 43? I guess, I guess we'll hear the history of it later. But the... The um, you know it has the, the 131 uh, turret number and this is the markings that it's actually been dressed in since it's been on display here at the museum. Um, some of the notable features of this is that this is an early Tiger, so we did have the, the filters on it. We do have the things that actually were on this tank when it was captured. I didn't get too much into detail, but this one you know as as far as Brick Mania kits goes, uh, it does have all the features that you normally expect. Like we have some interior stuff. Um, let me get this taken apart real quick. Pull the pull the pull the whole upper upper hull off. So we do have detailed engine compartment, all the air filters and stuff. The, the turret basket is here. Tank driver and radio operator will fit inside of here. So it's 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 more detailed than typical Brickmania kit. Uh, working suspension on the wheels, things like that. So it's it's pretty much a premium kit, and we're designing it. We we're releasing it in conjunction with the actual tank museum here. So it'll be a fundraiser for the tank museum. Uh, it'll be available from Brickmania and as well in Europe and in, and uh, uh, especially particularly England from the the, the Tank Museum, uh, ordering through their website or at their gift shop. Yeah, that's really incredible. So people will be able to pick up this specific tank, and you even kind of captured the the camo patterns as well, right, from this specific model. Right. So it's their tank, and we're trying to capture that. So it's it's you know it's a step up. It's it's all you know all Lego parts. Is there's there's difference between this and the other competitors who are putting out similar similar products. This is the the kind of the you know, the, you, you got the king or the tiger here is a sort of the king of the battlefield, and then you have the the, the Brickmania version of it. So it's about as good as you're going to get. I like that. I think that's a good way of putting it. So when you're working on a, a model like this, so this particularly is in kind of those desert colors here. So mm -hmm. what types of pieces are you working with, and what kind of designs are you trying to go for when you're working with these colors? Well, it's it's really. I mean, you, as you can see, it's not quite a perfect color match. This dark tan is is sort of the best color match we have but I can't get a model dark tan, so it's light tan, dark tan. Um, that makes it a little bit dif difficult, and plus the dark tan isn't available in all the different part element selection yet, so I had to go with the lighter tan. Um, you know, so we're using parts that are just coming out, some brand new parts, some things we've actually made, like this muzzle brake. Um, I should point out that on the real kit, this will be dark, uh, a tan color. We just didn't have one when I was putting the prototype together. So you're not even actually looking at the, the final kit. There'll be some, some slight refinements when this is all said and done. Well, thank you for that insight. So now, David, if you can provide maybe some more history. I know this is one of the, the most well-known pieces within the Tank Museum's collection here. I always assume it is. Um, the Tiger One's got 101 millimeters of frontal armor, which makes it quite a tough nut to crack. It has got um, torsion bar suspension and this overlapping of road wheels, which is typical of these German tanks. The only thing is that the we had it down as captured at a certain point in Tunisia. It now turns out it was captured elsewhere by the same unit or some, a similar unit anyway. So I never take that too seriously. But um, it was certainly captured in working order. The crew abandoned it when it was knocked out. They got out and fled. And the British walked away with it, took it down to Tunis, showed it to the king and then shipped it back to Britain. And that's how come we've got it. And it's now been restored to full working order. It's got a different engine in it, a Maybach out of a Tiger II. But it, it's near enough the same thing, and it seems to work pretty well. So we're quite pleased with it. It normally had a Maybach V12 engine in the back, but it drove forwards to a front sprocket to a transmission settled down here. So all that's underneath the armour. It meant that every time one of these tanks had to be fixed. They had to lift the turret off, drag the transmission back, and then hoik that out to, to work on it, which is rather laborious, I imagine, but that's the way they did it. The tanks were designed also with these wide tracks for use 
in muddy conditions on the battlefield and narrow tracks for use when they were um, moving them by rail. It was the only way they could make them run comfortably as railway vehicles. Really. They, you, you, that's why the sides, you see by the mudguard, are fold, they fold inwards. And those fillets down the side come off, all to narrow the width of the tank so that it can be transported by rail. The other feature, which you'll see, see the machine gun position here, has a thing like um, a wing nuts on the side of it. That was to take a deep wading shield. The idea being that this tank could go into deep water with a snorkel tube coming out from by the engine and that gave it enough air to breathe. But with the tank more or less submerged with just this tube shown above the surface. Not that I'd go down in one like that, but that's how they did it. And um, you can see also the damage inflicted by um, six-pounder guns of Churchill Mark IVs. There's one, one glanced off the side of the turret, another hits the underside of the gun there and goes down into the driver's compartment, and we think the driver was wounded when that happened. And that's probably why they evacuated it. But that's how come we got a fully working tank. Yeah. And that's quite an achievement. It's, one of, it's at least one tank we can talk about as having a real history, which is quite something. Not many people do that. No, it's really incredible. And so one reason that this is such a big part of the museum's collection is because there's also different events where it's brought out and driven for the public, right? It does for the moment. I, I wonder how long it's going to last. I think something is going to fold, like the gearbox or the, trans the um, suspension maybe will give up. But for the moment, that's what we do. It's a, a huge attraction when it's running, and we have whole days devoted to it. And people come in their thousands to see it. Yeah. So it's, re it's a really incredible tank to see here on display. So uh, I think Dan captured it nicely in the model. When, when you saw this for the first time, what did you think of, of Dan's model and the different elements that he was able to incorporate from the Tiger itself? That was very impressive. The Tiger is it's a fairly straightforward tank to to model because it's um, mainly square, which helps. But uh, to manage to get the interior and all that into it is quite amazing. I don't know how they do that. <laughs> I wouldn't even like to try. It, it really is remarkable. Well, thank you so much for the history and background on the tank here. I really appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching. If you want to learn more about the museum's incredible collection of tanks, make sure to subscribe to their YouTube channel. And if you want to see more of what Brickmania has to offer, head over to brickmania.com.